So, uh, afternoon everyone. Um, I'm excited to be here. Um, I want to share with you my thoughts on the discipline of dance. I believe the discipline of dance helps us as individuals. It helps us with our health and well-being. I believe it helps us with our relationships, our day-to-day -day relationships with the people we encounter. And ultimately, I believe dance as a discipline helps us contribute to the wider society to make a better future, build a better future. So I believe everybody can dance. Everyone's a dancer. And my job as a choreographer, as an artist, as a facilitator, educator, my job is to pull that out of an individual. My job is to share my knowledge with them and share my expertise that allows them to understand the principles of the discipline of dance. So everyone in here, to me, is a dancer. There's no such thing as a bad dancer. There are only bad dance teachers. And trust me, I've been in this business for a long time. There's a few of them. Not me. <laughs> I'm pretty good. Um, so, the discipline of dance is based around, for me, and in my practice, is based around three points, mainly. And that's the alignment of your thoughts, your emotions, and your physicality. And we don't often get the opportunity to align those three things. Most of the time, we're in discord with that. So, for example, a friend invites you over for something to eat. And as you take that first mouthful, your friend turns around to you and says, how's the food? And you, very politely, will turn around and say, it's great. But if I'm sitting at the table, I'm going to see you convulse. I'm going to see your body go. <laughs> That's what I do. I work with body language. And so what's just come out of your mouth in terms of saying, yes, the food is great, you're ultimately, physically, showing something completely different. And that's what I do. When I work with dance, I try and bring all of that together. And it's, dance is great, because in the studio, we spend a lot of time in union with our emotions, our thoughts, and our physicality. So I work, through, um, I work in a lot of settings, education, professional settings, uh, often um, custodial settings and community. And the slide you can see be behind is a still from those of you who saw the um, virtual reality 360 video outside. This is a still from that. I also work um, site specific and I made a piece um, with four generations of dancers. The eldest the gent in the center 73 years of age. He was the first black dancer to be employed by a contemporary dance company in the UK. Um, and he's 73 and the youngest was nine years of age. I do a lot of work with gifted and talented young dancers. And most of these dancers want to become professionals. But I don't believe it's possible for me to train these young dancers physically without addressing and considering their thoughts, their mind, the emotions that go with that, and their physicality. We do a lot of work with uh, various communities. And uh, for example, uh, 50 plus adults who've never danced a step in their lives. And young people that have mental health issues. And we use these principles to try and help give them coping mechanisms. So through dance, looking at mind, emotion, and physicality, they get an opportunity and a chance to be still in one place where everything is aligned and everything 
is united. This is a, a, an image from a piece I'm currently working on called The Yellow Wallpaper. Some of you may know it. And we want the, we want the audience to be immersed in the protagonist's world, what they see. Um, as you might have guessed, I'm interested in dance and technology. But here's the thing. When we use tech, and this is you know, a problem for me to solve as an artist, it becomes very sterile. So I'm talking about dance and uh, the human side of dance, how it affects us on a day-to-day -day level. But when we look and put that into the context of virtual reality, for example, something that's not quite tangible seems to be missing. And that's something that I'm, I'm, I'm still searching to find out. So there's, across all of the settings that I um, work across, there's four core principles. Emotional intelligence, creativity, coaching, not teaching, and honesty. And they're quite simple, but putting them into practice on a daily basis is where the difficulty comes. That's, that's a little harder. So emotional intelligence. For me, emotional intelligence is for me to walk into a studio full of dancers and being able to read the room, read the individual, and also acknowledge where I am emotionally. Because there's some days I'm just not on it. I'll be, that's the truth. And I'll generally say to my students, I'll say, please be kind to me today because I'm feeling a bit. I don't pretend. I don't lie that I'm the person with the font of all knowledge and I'm quite honest with them. But there's an element of self-awareness that emotional intelligence brings, which leads on to self-management. If we can be aware of our own emotional intelligence, then we can manage our, ourselves and our, our relationships much better. Social competence, being able to recognize it in others. If we're socially, um, if we're emotionally intelligent, then we can see that in others and we can behave reflectively. So when we're in the dance studio, we get the opportunity to practice, to play with, and to experiment. And this is like on a daily basis. We can experiment with all of this becoming aligned. And we do that through using emotions and turning that into movement and characterization. And we play. Creativity, the application of imaginative thought. You see, I'm a bit shaky when it comes to creativity because I think there's loads of definitions of what creativity is. And in each industry, there's tiny little nuances that work better in some than in others. So for me, I try and create an environment for creativity to flourish. And I've found that in creating that environment, there's got to be room to fail. We do a lot of failure in our studio. And in fact, most people think that dancers have got fantastic balance, physical balance. But in our studio, we want you to fall over. If you're on your legs and you have perfect balance in our studio, we're kind of like, well, you're not really pushing the boundaries. It's important for a dancer to keep falling, keep falling, keep falling, because then they know when the boundaries are. They know where the, the limit of their ability is. And it's only when they know the limit of their ability are they able to push that boundary a little bit further. So, coaching, not teaching. Providing a space for dancers to fail. Providing an opportunity for dancers to show, play with, prove their understanding. Rather than just regurgitating the steps of a choreographer, giving dancers the opportunity to put it all into practice. And that's a rare thing. That's a beautiful thing that, that dance does. They say it takes three years to make a professional dance student, five years to make a professional dancer, 
and 10 years to make a dance artist. And that's the part for me when I'm talking about training young dancers. We can train them physically. Yeah, we can work them from morning till, till night. But to bring that humanness, that understanding of mind, emotion, and physicality is what turns them into an artist. It's what makes them human. It's what makes you be able to go to the theater and respond to a piece of culture. Honesty. Now, honesty is kind of the uh, simplest one, but the most difficult. So often we'll get a parent or a carer and somebody will bring little Johnny into our studio and they'll say, Johnny wants to be the next Ashley Banjo. He wants to be the next diversity. If you don't know who I'm talking about, you need to go and watch a bit more telly. But anyway, <laughs> right? So little Johnny comes into class and without the understanding or the realization, Ashley Banjo's trained for years. The stuff that you see them doing to make it look so simple, you have to have phenomenal coordination. So here comes little Johnny, and you're teaching him, and little Johnny's doing his thing, but Johnny feels uncomfortable. Working physically with your body makes you extremely self-conscious. Johnny's not having a great time. Emotionally, he's like, this is not working for me. So he feels horrible, and let's face it, he looks terrible. Most dance teachers will turn around with the usual encouragement, which will be, go on, Johnny, keep going. You're great. You'll get there. No. Let's be honest with little Johnny. Sorry, Johnny, I know this feels crap for you. And no, Johnny, it doesn't look that good. But here's what we're going to do. These are the things we're going to put in place to help you improve. And over time, you will get better. Just be honest. Prove the truth. So I was delivering uh, a session in a school with a group of uh, young men who, let's put it this way, their behavior wasn't great. Um, and that's why they asked me to come in, because they, you know, the power of dance. And as I'm teaching them about what I expect from them in, in the studio, a head teacher, uh, well, head of year, bursts through the door and screams at one of the young men for something that had happened earlier on. What do I do? I've just told these young men about what we expect, how to treat people, how to be nice and kind and respectful to each other, and here comes an adult of some authority. I'm a guest in the school. I'm not gonna lose face in front of these young men because I'm just beginning to gain a little bit of trust. So I, I stopped the class and I asked this uh, deputy head if he would leave and come back later when I wasn't there. For these young men, I was able to prove the truth that this rule applies to everyone. And we don't often do that. We don't often prove the truth. We always talk about what's the correct thing to do, but we never ever underline and go, this is the truth. I'm gonna prove it to you right here and now. So we're always searching for opportunities to prove the truth. Thank you very much. <laughs>